Good morning. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit 
be with you. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. What is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free? Lord be with you. Let us pray. Ever loving God, your Son gives himself as living bread for the life of the world. Fill us with such a knowledge of his presence that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life to serve you continually through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. First reading is from Proverbs, chapter 9, verse 1 to 6. Wisdom is portrayed as a woman who invites people to partake of her banquet. Just as ordinary food is necessary for physical life, wisdom's food, insight, and understanding is necessary for the fullness of life with God. Partaking of a wisdom's banquet is the way to life. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her animals. She has mixed her wine. She has also fed her table. She has sent out her servant girl, she calls, from the highest places in the town. You that are simple, turn in here. To those without sense, she says, come eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Lay aside immaturity and live and walk in the way of insight. The word of the Lord. Psalm 34. Fear the Lord, you saints of the Lord, for those who fear the Lord lack nothing. Come, children, and listen to me. I will teach you reverence for the Lord. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from lying words. The second reading is from Ephesians chapter 5. True wisdom integrates our new reality in Christ with our Christian fellowship and daily contact. Because we are filled with the Spirit, Christians regularly rejoice together, give thanks to God for one another, and care for one another. In this way, we revere our Lord Jesus Christ. But fornication and impurity of any kind or greed must not even be mentioned among you, as is proper among saints. Entirely out of place is 
obscene, silly, and vulgar talk, but instead let there be thanksgiving. Be sure of this, that no fornicator or impure person or one who is greedy, that is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things, the wrath of God comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore, do not be associated with them. For once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Sleeper, awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time, because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with spirit, as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. In God's, John's Gospel, the feeding of the 5,000 leads to extended teachings in which Jesus identifies himself as the true bread of life. Finally, in these verses, he makes a connection that would not be understood until after his death in light of the church's celebration of Holy Communion. Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among them, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly, I, say, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord.
confess our faith together with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Calling on the spirit of wisdom to guide our hearts and our minds, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Reignite the prayer of the church. By your spirit, root your church around the globe in prayer. Mercy for God. Wisdom has built her house. May the church be a house of wisdom for all who enter. May we continue to grow and stretch in ways we never thought possible. Mercy for God. Wisdom has mixed her wine. May the harvest seasons be plentiful this year. We pray for orchards, vineyards, farms, and all of creation. Protect and conserve the earth. Mercy for God. Wisdom has employed her laborers. Be with all who seek adequate employment. Guide our economic and governmental leaders to support the people of our world with fair wages and safe working conditions. Mercy for God. Wisdom has invited her guests. Make your presence known to all who feel lost, abandoned, ill, or hurting at this time, especially Mike, Lil, George, Darlene, Ray, Jimmy, Carol, Jen, Louie, Marty, Loretta, Donnie, Alex, Chrissa, Holly, Gabby, Gabriella, Louie, Schwim, Carissa, Christopher, Brenda, Larry, Greg, Carson Nicholas, Cameron, Brady, Vicki, Wanda, Janet, Fred, Deb, Bobby, and Joe. Direct your spirit of care to all who seek healing and comfort. Mercy for God. Wisdom has set her table. May this congregation be a welcome table to all who seek the refuge of God. Break down walls and barriers that prevent us from offering a seat at this table to anyone who comes. Mercy for God. Wisdom has shown her path of insight. May we journey on her paths, looking forward to a bright future while remembering from where we have come. We give our thanks for those who have gone before us. Mercy for God. We lift these prayers up to you, gracious God. We commend all for whom we pray trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God. You reveal your glory as the glory of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, equal in majesty, undivided in splendor, one Lord, one God, ever to be adored in your eternal glory. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. We give you thanks, Father, through Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, whom you sent in this end of the ages to save and redeem us and to proclaim to us your will. He is your word, inseparable from you, through whom you created all things and in whom you take delight. He is your word, sent from heaven to a virgin's womb. He there took on our nature and our lot and was shown forth as your Son, born of the Holy Spirit and of the Virgin Mary. He, our Lord Jesus, fulfilled all your will and won for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands in suffering in order to free from suffering those who trust you. He is the one who handed over to a death he freely accepted in order to destroy death, to break the bonds of the evil one, to crush hell underfoot, to give light to the righteous, to establish his covenant and to show forth the resurrection taking bread and giving thanks to you, said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the covenant in my new blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering then his death and resurrection, we take this bread and cup, giving you thanks that you have made us worthy to stand before you and to serve you as your priestly people. Send your spirit upon these gifts of your church. Gather into one all who share this bread and wine. Fill us with your Holy Spirit to establish our faith and truth that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through whom all glory and honor are yours. Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. Come.
Please stand. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with all your own life. In your name we pray.